Hey guys, welcome back. This is Little Fear Fear here, and today we are here for another restoration video. And this is of the first tank engine of the channel here, as well as a mysterious German locomotive here. I don't know the exact class of it. I believe it has to do something with the 75 here. So something similar to a BR-75. I'll show it up here. But I recently acquired this locomotive as well as one piece of rolling stock to go with it. These locomotives do of course have the, or both of these do of course have the European couplings. So they can actually run very well with my other pieces of equipment. And this locomotive, I have no idea when the last time it has run. So let's just test it out here. And so starting off and forwards. Okay, well, that's a squeak that's gonna have to get dealt with. And let's see if it's in reverse. So obviously, obviously I will stop running that. So it doesn't screech to our ears here. And so let's see what's happening underneath this locomotive. I don't see anything badge wise, so I don't know the exact brand of this locomotive. But let's just take this on over to the workspace instead of normally like I do drive it over because I don't want to hear that. All right, now let's open up this locomotive here. I'm gonna set it on its side. So these parts are really tight, so I don't know if this locomotive's ever been opened up before. We will of course be doing a standard kind of procedure, just trying to clean everything, especially getting rid of that squeak. I have no idea what else could be wrong with this locomotive. I believe there is also a missing piece to the rear coupler. I'll just set those there. All right, now this had no instructions with it, so I'll try to see what the next step is in getting this locomotive apart. Seems that there are some screws on top. Oh, there we go, okay. Didn't know if there's one down the chimney. Some older Tyco locomotives or other brands like that have some down the chimney. All right, here's the inside. Front is mostly weight. I believe that bulb is shot or out. It's also loose, so that might also be an issue. All right, now we've got the locomotive opened, so I'm just gonna set this top piece off to the side and I'll just clean that off camera. I'll just wipe it down with some Q-tips or anything like that, just be kind of soft with it. Now here we have the motor, and after some quick investigation and trial and error, I was not able to remove this engine without breaking any delicate parts. So I did my best to just try to clean it up a little bit on the inside there. Now with the two screws I took off from earlier, show this bottom plate with a full rack of metal gears. And so these are actually pretty good and shows it's kind of high quality. Again, I'm not seeing any mark of a manufacturer so I have no idea still where this comes from. Obviously something German, but yeah. So now I'm just gonna look at these gears here, remove any old lubricant and add some of my own lithium grease. So I don't think there's much. No, there's not much already. Just kind of tap for now to see if there is really a lot. No, there really wasn't much to begin with. That's probably also part of the noise. And so I'm just gonna add some of my own lithium grease here with a toothpick. Yep, I want a toothpick. These gears do not conduct electricity. So if they're isolated, that doesn't really matter. Once we get this locomotive up and running a lot more, this should spread out throughout. I get into the teeth of the worm gear. I will clean up the sides a little bit. Try not to get some of that grease on the body. There we go. This should work its way in. And now I will go ahead and try to clean up the wheels here. These ones, I don't want to take off fully apart since I'm not familiar with how this goes back together. So I'm going to try my best and scrape just against the wheels like this, holding them in place with one hand. 
and then I'll add a little bit of power to the locomotive since everything is still hooked in. It will rotate the wheels a little bit and then I'll go back to scrubbing. So see you guys then. All right now the lubricant is spread kind of inside the engine here. I've added a little bit more to the bottom but you can see these wheels are pretty much shined up. These two sets are the important ones because these two pick up power. This front wheel does not pick up power at all. You can see the little pickups. So next we're going to be lubricating all of the linkage and all of that because that's a bunch of complex little parts. For that I'll be using some Lavelle 102. You can find this at most hobby stores. Just put a little squirt on each of the bearings. case you can also get the axles since the locomotive does not pick up power from those axles. Just flip it over and do the same. This is one of the things I really enjoy about model trains. It makes you feel like you're actually working on a real locomotive. Aside from the fact that this weighs about two pounds and the real ones weigh several hundred tons. All right, now let's go ahead and lubricate these front axles, the front and rear truck. I believe this, like I said earlier, I think this light is out and so it's not working. And like all the other lights I have, I don't have any replacements. So I'll just take it out for now and I'll make sure to put it in a secure spot so I don't lose it for later. But for now, I'm going to reattach this bottom plate to the locomotive as well as turn, put the two trucks back on and we can test the running performance and all that before we put the shell back on. All right, now I did end up cleaning the commutator just a little bit. And the strategy I employed was something similar to this, which was a Q-tip shoved in by a screwdriver, or the fluff of one. I kind of broke up the fibers a little bit. Tried to shove that inside and wipe the inside. And I went through quite a few Q-tips and it was really black in there. So I think that was the main issue with the look one of itself. I added a little bit more grease to the top. I will just wipe some of that up though. Yeah. All right, now it's time to test the locomotive out. All right, now let's test it just going forwards here. There we go. It's a lot quieter and the locomotive still does run better in reverse. And it can be a little bit jittery and forwards, but there we go. The motor is a little bit warm, but that's all right because I was doing some little bit of testing off screen here, just making sure I didn't screw up something with the wire. And so let's get the body back on this locomotive. All right, now fitting the body back on this locomotive is fairly simple. Considering you just Press it down, make sure everything's aligned, make sure you put it on the right way. And then just take a screw in the top here. Make sure that everything is pressed down. The screw did set in funny. There we go. The first time I tried to put it back fully on, I had the rear coupler up, so it wasn't wanting to come down. Make sure that's plenty tight. 
body is not going to fall off. All right. Now let's do one little last test with the singular freight car I have, and then we'll be on to the conclusion of this video. All right, now back on this little test track loop here. Let's send it in reverse and hopefully the couplers mesh up. I just have my hand here so it doesn't just keep pushing. You cut out on me? Yeah, I did. Yeah, the couplers are sadly not properly aligned. Just get my hand in there. Of course, I'm not terribly familiar with these couplers either. There we go. All right. And now I can more effectively and without hurting my ears, run this little train. I guess I don't know how many cars you need it to be technically called a train, but now let's move on to the conclusion of this video. All right, now we've made it to the end of the video. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching uh, the cleaning of the wheels, all the lubrication, and the interesting way to clean out the commutator and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun with this model, and I feel like it's a very you know unique model and to the collection. <laughs> it has a few interesting designs on it, as well as you know the fact that I still don't know what maker it is. If I figure out in the end, I will like put it up here probably. And so it's glad glad to have it haul its little car behind it. And next time we'll hopefully be working on this Bachman uh, <laughs> locomotive here. And so we'll be opening that up. That has a cracked gear in the rear, so that'll be fun to deal with. And so I'd like to thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.